Oh, Dixie is a lot more than that. She's a lot more. She's bright. She's funny. She's a wonderful woman. Well, she's safe. I suppose I, I should feel relieved. I'll tell you anything that I can about her. So there's this beautiful, bright, wonderful girl waiting for me in Pine Valley. Huh? Somebody, uh, somebody devoted to me. Somebody who truly loved me, that, that I truly loved. Yes, you did. Then if she meant so much to me, then why can't I remember her? Why does this girl feel like a total stranger? Look, Edmund told me things come back to you in pieces. Maybe we should stop, you know, for no, a little no, while. No, 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 far from it. I mean, I, I, I've got to, I've got to know sometime. Well, but you don't have to know all at once. I mean, I know from Edmund that you get headaches and... No, no, so far, so good. I'm fine, really. So far? Well, if I reach for a handful of aspirin, we can stop, but under the circumstances, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you'd go on. Where should I start? Let me. It sounds like I had everything a man could want, that my life was full. Was it? I mean, before she died, my mother would tell... <laughs> my mother. I can't really say that anymore, can I? Listen, you were Ted Orsini to Nola. You were truly her son. And that doesn't disappear before, because your name changes. She was the one thing I could count on. No, I can't. Look. We don't have to talk about this now. We can talk about it tomorrow. You don't have to feel like you, Are you have to kidding? know everything at once. Noah hated procrastination. She, uh... She used to think that patience was a bigger flaw than a virtue. As a matter of fact, when she found out that I had feelings for this mystery woman, she, uh, she practically turned out the National Guard looking for her. And if she hadn't been in a hospital, that I have a feeling that she would have been out, out there combing the streets as well. No, she was convinced that this girl, whoever she was, was a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. She was right. You and Dixie? You were special. How special? As close as anybody gets to the real thing, you had it. That I just can't happen to remember. If what you're saying is true, then shouldn't Dixie's name have been the first thing, the first word out of my mouth? Not necessarily. No, 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 think about this. This is not like forgetting to do the dishes or, or mislaying your car keys. This woman was supposed to be the love of my life. But you saw her face. Doesn't that mean something to you? I mean, you couldn't remember your name or your family no. or your no. home. No, no, no. I remembered her when I was thinking about something else. Something else completely different. This, this Billy Clyde Tuggle person. Even now, he's more real to me than, uh, than she is. I remembered her because he was threatening her. But you saved Dixie from him. You risked your life. I mean, that's why you were fighting with Billy Clyde. That's when you... That's when you fell off the bridge. He's dead, isn't he? Yes, he's dead. He's dead and buried. They found the body. At least I got that right. She's all right. She's safe. I can remember feeling like I'd rather die than, than let him hurt her. Apparently, I almost did. But like I said, I remember the feeling, not the woman. Oh, don't dismiss the feeling. Because you're right on. And hopefully soon, everything else will come back to you. You stay in touch with this girl? Well, you know, Pine Valley is it's a very small town. You say she still loves me. She never stopped loving you. 
And she needs you now. She needs you more we than she... We were married. Yes. All right. So if we were so much in love, if she still loves me, then why did we get divorced? Trust me, Dixie, I can help. I can get you out of this. You can't. Yes, I can, I promise. Cross my heart as your best friend. Go away, Gloria. Just don't be my friend. Go away. You know I can't let you down. Go away. Tell everybody to go away. Brian, everyone. Before they... Before they, uh... Die. You're talking garbage, Dixie. Dixie, do you remember a year ago when you found me in my old apartment? I was just like you are now. Maybe a little worse. I wouldn't talk to anyone. I, I, I couldn't talk to anybody. I hated myself and my life. I couldn't even talk about what had happened. The rape. You promised that everything was going to be okay. And eventually it was. You pulled me back from the edge of a cliff. You told me how good of a person I was. But I come to find out that you're a better person than I am. Because you forgave me for things that I could not even begin to forgive myself for. I'm not going to let Adam do this to you. I think you should rest. Ruth is here. It's real pretty outside. It's a little cold, though. I don't know if the groundhog saw a shadow or not. Dixie. Everything's gonna be okay. This time, I promise. I remembered arguing. I remembered her telling me that the marriage was over. And the memory was real. I know it was. I wasn't there, but yes, you got a divorce. Well, so far in the accuracy department, I'm batting a thousand. Yeah, but don't you remember? You and Dixie were planning to be remarried. You worked everything out. No. I don't remember. And that's the problem. So, tell me, what was there that had to be worked out? Dixie's family wasn't in favor of your marriage. They interfered a lot. It was a major factor. I had in-law problems? Oh, come on. There has to be more to it than that. There is. Well, go on. Look, no matter how I put this, it's not going to sound right. It wasn't an affair. She found someone else? No. Me? With another woman? It's very complicated, all right? Oh, there were extenuating my God, circumstances. It's not be... easy to explain. What are you saying? I had to be there? I was there for all the good it does me. This is fun. Let's recap, shall we? Apart from growing up as a veritable juvenile delinquent, I managed to screw up a wonderful marriage to the perfect woman by cheating on her? No, it wasn't like that, all right? You weren't... It was a mistake. No kidding. You have a talent for understatement. I mean, if a person's going to destroy his life, he should go for the gusto. That's one hell of a mistake, don't you think? The important thing is, is that Dixie forgave you. Terrific. My wife was a saint, I was a pig. No. You were happy together. 
You and Dixie were starting over. Is there anything else I should know about? Auto theft, grand larceny, maybe a murder. You were a pretty terrific guy. Sure. As adulterers go, I was a veritable prince. Why are you here? Why didn't she come instead? You put the connection together. You came on your own. I didn't want to get Dixie's hopes up for nothing. I wanted to make sure that you were alive. That's not it. There's something else, something you're not telling me. Tad, look, you have a whole life. There's, there's a lot to tell. Not about me, about her. Is she all right? Is something wrong? Dixie's in trouble. She's in serious trouble. Her pulse is steady, but... Uh... She's been like this for so long. What? Oh. I'd like to bring her into the hospital. Oh, well, you know what Adam will make of that at the hearing. Yeah, well, I'm sure to find out, I suppose. Anna Tolan was here. Oh. She was going to testify that Dixie was mentally stable. Now she can't. I mean, it's another win for Adam. Well, well the hearing is not as important as Dixie's health. There's really not much we can do for her. She needs a psychiatrist. Anna didn't say anything about hospitalization. She just recommended daily sessions. Well, but was Dixie like this when Anna saw her? Yes. Maybe, maybe it would be better to let Dixie stay here where she's comfortable. Well, I don't know. I trust Anna's judgment. I mean, we could stay near her. We could, we could talk to her. Maybe she'll snap out of it. Uh, maybe she won't. I can't believe that, that Brian would pick this of all times to disappear. I know. on earth are you? Listen, I need to talk to Dixie. How could you just walk out when Dixie's like this? Wait, I've got good news. Please, let, let me just talk to her, okay? Are you sure about this? Positive. All right. Dixie, honey. Sweetheart. Just listen, okay? Just listen. Dixie. It's Brian. Guess who's coming home to see his mommy? Baby? You're bringing Junior home? Dixie had a son by her first husband. You loved him. Her first husband? Oh, the son. Adam Chandler. Chandler. That name ought to ring a few bells for you. You hated each other. And justifiably so. Adam married Dixie. The only reason he did that was so he could get legal rights to their son. And I didn't try to kill him, too. Oh, he wanted to, believe me. But Dixie was in love with him at the time, or she thought she was anyway. He has silver hair. Yes. Do you remember him? No. I remember fighting with him for her. You know, so far, Pine Valley sounds like a veritable barrel of monkeys, just chock full of prize people. Adam's latest offense is suing for custody for his son. Wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. What is it? What's the matter? What? In the hospital, my mother had a friend, a patient advocate, somebody named Miss Cooney who was involved in a, a custody dispute all the time. Uh, that was... Uh, that was Dixie. 